Okay, um, hi. So, um, yes, this is going to be a really uplifting talk. Um, so, um, the control problem is a, a general problem of how we stop new technology from wiping us out. Um, so, here's an example. Um, so, imagine I'm not a string theorist, but suppose I was. Suppose that one um, night when I'm having a shower, which is when I usually have my epiphanies, I have an epiphany, and I realize how to reconcile um, Einstein's theory of relativity with um, quantum mechanics. And um, I realize that this is an amazing idea. I am going to get a Nobel Prize. Um, I just need to publish it. Um, and then, even more amazing, I have a second epiphany, and I realize there's a way to test my idea that has um, testable implications. In particular, it implies that if you take actually some objects exactly like these, what else have we got? And a scrunched up tissue, slightly used. <laughs> <laughs> now what you have to do, according to my, this theory that I've developed, if it's true, and if I, if I hold, I have to hold the keys in this particular way, they're going to be a little bit wobbly, just like this. And if I hold them together, and I just touch them, um, then all of the energy that's contained in this mass, and all of the um, energy that's contained in this mass will be converted via E equals MC squared into, into raw energy. And it will set up a chain reaction in which everything um, that's in any contact whatsoever with that chain reaction, you know, with, with the substance, will itself undergo the chain reaction. Um, and there will be a huge explosion. Um, and so I'm all ready to do it. And then I stop. Why do I stop? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I stop because I realize that if I'm wrong, I'll learn that I'm wrong. But if I'm right, I won't learn that I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't perform the experiment. But I, nevertheless, I'm intent on getting my Nobel Prize. And so I write it up. And I'm already to send it to the publishers. But then, again, I pause. I realize that actually, um, it's really pretty obvious once you've understood my theory that if you get some keys like this and tissue paper like this and you hold them together, then the world's going to explode. The only reason it hasn't happened already is because you need, you need exactly these combination of keys and you need tissue paper exactly like this. Um, we know we've been, we've been riding the highway this whole time without knowing it. Um, so, should I publish? And I realize, actually, I shouldn't. Because if I do, in about, it'll, it'll be published, it'll, it'll go on the internet, and within about 10 minutes, some idiot. <laughs> Everybody will be dead. <laughs> okay, so I realize I can't publish my idea. Now, I've got a, a lovely friend, my fellow researcher. She's super smart. She's, um, I'm surprised she hasn't thought of this idea already because she's talking about the same stuff. It's clear that she's on the verge of working out this theory. She's walking down a steep flight of steps right in front of me. <laughs> what should I do? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so the idea here is that it's possible, we can, we can imagine that there are discoveries out there waiting to be made such that should we make them and should those ideas get on the internet, um, once on the internet they can never be taken off the internet, um, then they will empower lone people, crazy people, to, to destroy everything. Right. Um, so that's not going to happen with string theory, but um, it might with other technologies, right? So, so Pandora's box is perhaps a parable for our times. So Pandora was given a beautiful box. Actually, that's a mistranslation. It was really a jar and told never to open it. Um, and powered by curiosity, um, she did open it. How could she not? Um, all the evils of the world were released and they couldn't be put back in the box. And in making, so the idea is that in making certain scientific or technological breakthroughs, we might be doing this very thing. So, so perhaps there's some research we should just not be performing because we don't want that Pandora's box to ever be open. Okay, so the control problem with respect to not robots, but rabbits. <laughs> okay, um, so on one side in New Zealand, there's the rabbits. On the other side, 
<laughs> bears, guns, dogs, boys and carrots. Um, and this is a result of a, of a war between the rabbits and the humans. And as you look there, how many dead humans can you see? <laughs> There's none, right? It was a complete lopsided massacre of the rabbits. Okay, we, we can, you know, we have no trouble defeating rabbits. But why are there still rabbits? <laughs> I mean, what's going on? <laughs> okay, um, so the answer is that rabbits can self replicate. Right? So a single dead <laughs> rabbit can have 45 offspring in a year. Rabbits can breed at five months of age. Rabbit populations commonly increase 18 fold in one season. Rabbits breed like rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, can a farmer kill a rabbit? Yes. Right. Um, but can we kill a rabbit before the rabbit makes more rabbits? And no, right? And that's why we have in New Zealand a control problem for rabbits. Um, but luckily, rabbits are little fluffy guys. Well, I have some at home, and, and they try as they might. They can slightly scratch me, but that's the worst they can do. Right. Um, but what if they were incredibly dangerous. And so now, can we try and play, fingers crossed, the audio works. Okay. Imagine they're like this. Yes. Help to self replicate. How would they do it? Would they do it like rabbits do it? Like we do it? Presumably not, right? How, how might they self replicate? Software and hardware. Software and hardware, yeah. So, um, by conquering and repurposing a car factory, that would be a good, one, a good way to do it. Yeah. Just take over that. 
Um, how many self-replicating killer robots would it take to exterminate humanity? How many do you need? Just one at first. One. Yeah. One. One Yeah, yeah, one. Once you have one, and you turn away and you come back, suddenly there's more than one because it's been self-replicating. <laughs> right. So one is too many. Right? We mustn't allow even one to be made. Right. With rabbits, it's two. Right. With robots, it's one. Okay, so um, how do you prevent even one self-replicating killer robot from ever being built? And uh, think here of uh, people who create self-replicating things that are extremely destructive. They're called hackers, the things like creating computer viruses. Now imagine that they can create a kind of a computer virus that's a, a killer robot. So, with great difficulty. So, um, you might think that the field of robotics isn't sufficiently advanced for this to be a serious near-term threat. I mean, there's the Daleks. Well, there's certainly buggers that made the in the universe. Um, but now the, um, do we have the next quote? <coughs> Escape. intelligence is our biggest existential threat. With AI, we're summoning the demon. Um, here's Bill Gates. I agree with Elon Musk and some others on this, and I don't understand why some people were not concerned. Um, here's Stephen Hawking. Um, success in creating AI would be the biggest event in human history, and he is not wrong, right? because these machines will be smarter than us. Unfortunately, it might also be the last, unless we learn how to avoid the risks. Um, here's Jeffrey Hinton, so he's the godfather of AI, he's the guy who came up with backpropagation, the, the, and, and the, the notion of a, um, uh, of a, um, the, the, well, the, the latest generation of um, things like GPT. Um, so um, he quit his job at Google in May uh, this year to be able to speak freely about the dangers of AI. Um, before, when people used to ask him how he could work on technology that was dangerous, he would paraphrase Oppenheimer and say, when you see something that's technically sweet, you just go ahead and do it. And he doesn't say that anymore. <laughs> because he's very worried. Um, so he's a result of a 2022 survey of AI experts. The question was, what probability do you put on human inability to control future advanced AI systems causing human extinction or some similarly permanent and severe disempowerment of the human species? And the median reply was 10%. And that was before GPT-3. So these experts believe they might be summoning demons, but probably of 10%, and they're doing it anyway. So brainstorm. <laughs> so imagine the year is now 2050. Intelligent robots are now commonplace in homes and workplaces everywhere. Robot hardware is easy to get. You can get all robots from Trade Me. They're smart. Um, many hackers tick with robots to make their own fun. A disgruntled lone wolf hacker, hacker, perhaps a terrorist, would like to cause an accident making to society. How might we stop them? How much time have I got? <laughs> okay, like take two minutes to talk to your neighbour and come up with a solution to this problem. You have to solve this problem, otherwise we're all going to die. Okay, so, so two minutes. Okay, has anybody got a solution, please? 
A suggestion. Death sentence for hacking. <laughs> Sorry? Death sentence. Death sentence for hacking. Okay, um, so the idea is that basically if you're ever caught playing with computer code secretly, you don't have Okay. Um, this, yep. Switch off all electricity. So, yep, we go back to the Stone Age. <laughs> Good, yeah. Any improvements on going back to the Stone Age? Yes. Okay, that would be awesome. So the plan is to make it the case that everybody in the world is a nice person. <laughs> that would be awesome, right? Um, how, that's, that's hard though. Um, uh, yeah. Regulating them, preventing. So it's regulating them, right? Yeah, so we have an International Atomic Energy Agency which regulates nuclear proliferation, right? Tries to stop nuclear bombs being created, right? So the idea is we'd have something similar for this. Would it be as easy to do with with robots and AI as it is with nuclear no. technology? No. no, because uranium and plutonium are really hard to get and to purify, right? So you, you can spot people who are doing it because they've got these huge industrial complexes <laughs> that you can't do it in your in your bedroom. So um, so it'd be incredibly hard to get. It'd, it'd be very draconian surveillance of basically all teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> Which is probably a good idea. Okay. Any, any other solutions? Yep. Uh, we make uh, self-replicating human robots that like people and other robots. Okay, so, so the idea here is that we have the, the, the grey team, they're the bad killer robots, and what we're going to do is we're going to create an army of blue robots. See, the good team, we are going to have on every street corner a blue robot, and it's just going to stand there and do nothing. It'll perhaps occasionally help an old lady cross the road with her shopping, but otherwise it'll just stand there until it sees a grey robot running from a teenager's bedroom towards a car factory, at which point it'll unfurl its ginormous cannons and start blasting it. Okay, what is the flaw in that plan? False positives. False positives, yeah, yeah false positives. You, you, I mean, it might mistake me. Um, yeah, I, sometimes I could look like a robot. Um, anything else? What if you hacked the blue robot? Yeah, what if you hacked the blue robot? Basically, you've just done almost all the work required <laughs> to make great robots. Okay, any other suggestions? Yeah? I actually like your idea most, which is to connect surveillance of teenagers. <laughs> okay, okay, good. So we're going to go with that then. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so unless we do something, we're in trouble. Okay, and that's without considering genetics. Okay. So I'll leave you with that cheerful thought. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>